Recording in progress. Good evening. I'd like to call this uh, regular Board of Finance meeting for Monday, March 18th, 2024, to order. First item on the agenda. Uh, tonight we are receiving our audit report for fiscal year 2022-2023 from Clifton Larson Allen. We will also say CLA t this evening for brevity purposes. Uh, with us tonight, Santo Carta, who will be uh, providing a presentation and answer any questions we have regarding the audit. Um, Santo, good evening. Good to see you. Good. Um, yes, you were you you wanted to share the screen, I believe, correct? Tracy will allow you that. Oh, sh you should be able to share your screen at this point. We see it, so, so good to go. So go ahead, sir. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Uh, so do you want me just you want me to start this now? Yes. Yes, you can. Okay. You can begin. All right. So I'll, I prepared a, a quick presentation, and um, I'll go through all these uh, slides, and then at the end, if anyone has any questions regarding the, the actual actor, I have that also. And we can pull that up and, and can answer any of those questions also. <clears throat> but first, you know, just time to go through presentation. Got some, got some legal stuff in my papers too. And this is gonna be, I can email this to you guys. If you guys need to put this into a like pamphlet or some sort. Yes, we, yeah, we will. This presentation will be uh, provided to us or uploaded <coughs> after. Okay, thank you. And for the agenda items, so in terms of the engagement. Will be executive summary, some financial highlights, single audits, governance communication memo, and we just briefly touch on the upcoming gas pronouncements. So, in terms of the engagement, here to express an opinion on whether your basic financial statements are presented in accordance with GAAP. Express an in relation to opinion on the schedule of expenditures of state and federal financial assistance. Express an opinion on compliance related to major state and federal award programs, and to provide a report on internal control over financial reporting and compliance with laws, regulations, contracts, and grants. And then provide a report on internal controls over compliance related to major federal and state award programs. <clears throat> Excuse me. Start off uh, financial statements. We did issue an unmodified opinion on the financial statements, which is the best opinion you want for your financials. There were no findings reported on in, <coughs> in report on internal control or compliance. And uh, my first type of state single audit is really state and federal single audit. We issued both unmodified opinions on, on state pro and state and federal programs. And there were no compliance findings or significant deficiencies in internal control or compliance. So, pretty clean, guys. <clears throat> Next, financial highlights. Oop. I'll try to make this a little bit of a So, for governmental activities, the uh, current assets ended at 39, uh, total assets ended at 235.3 million. For the outflows were 10.7 million. The liabilities ended at 161.5 million. For the inflows of resources were 21.9 million. And your total net position ended at 62.6 million, about 6 million higher than it was last year. So this is a full accrual basis of, of, of common guys. So it's your fund financial statements brought up to the front, and all your liabilities and assets are brought are brought here onto the books here for exhibit one. So this is really matches exhibit one. And your business type activities ended, ended the year at uh, 445,000, and down about a million dollars from last year. And then your total net position ended the year 63.0 million, up from about 57.9 in the prior year. And, and if anyone has any questions, we can go after, go over it after, or interrupt me at any time if you have any questions. Fund your fund financial statements. 
general fund ended at 23.2 million. Construction fund was pretty much stayed steady. Just I think just your interest payments for the year uh, decreased. I mean, decreased the fund from 3.1 to 3053 to 3083. Miscellaneous grants fund increased by 207,000. So the end of the last year started at 80,000 and the 287.4. And your non major funds went from 2.1 million to 3.3 million. Or an increase of 1.2. In the aggregate, it increased about 1.9. Your fund balance went from about 12.8 to 14.7 million. Okay. Sorry, I'm trying to make this as big as possible for you guys. So this is a breakdown of your fund balance. For the year, the general fund ended at 23.2, increased by about 2.2. Your non spendable ended at 207,000. Your restricted, which is your volunteer firefighter, is 663,000. 6 6.6 .6 million in committed fund downs, which is for various town projects that you guys um, had put aside. Uh, 1.5 in assigned, which are your encumbrances, carrying force, and reserve for personnel. And your unassigned ended at about $14.2 million a year. And just a note on that your budget's actually, your revenue ended at plus $2.5 million. So you, you uh, brought in $2.5 million more than budget, and you spent about $300,000 less than budget in expense size. <clears throat> Pension and OPEP trust fund. So for additions, your contributions from employer and plan members, about 4.4 .4 million. Uh, your, so uh, that investment earnings for you were about 6.1 million or 6.2 million. Your total additions were about 10.6. Your expenses were about 6.1. And you had a Positive change in that position at about 4.5 million. So you ended the year at about 76.5 million, up from about 72 million in the prior year. Pension and trust loss. Okay. So net pension liability. Um, excuse me, this right here. Sorry about that. I broke it up by um, employee budget by each of the plans. The employee's plan has got about a $7.6 million liability and it's 82.31 percent funded. The lease plan has an $8.3 million liability and it's about 76 percent funded. The public school plan, end of the year, about $5.9 million liability and it's about 67.9 percent funded. Volunteer firefighters ended the year with a $2.8 million liability. And because the $600,000 that you guys have in the general fund is in a trust fund, you're considered 0% funded, even though you have you do have $600,000 to put aside for it. And your OPEP liability ended the year at $13.7 million, and about 15.9% funded for your plan in total. So for a state single audit, we received about 4.9 million. We did test town and road urban system, urban systems, and the, the pilot program. There's a, there's a they're, they're given in three separate grants, but we tested this one grant, so that's why they're called tier payments. And we did issue unmodified opinion on the major programs and no compliance findings for internal control issues at all, guys. So everything's coming. 
federal single audit, $5.1 million was spent. We did test the special education cluster, which is IDEA, ESSER program, and ARPA program. Uh, we had unmodified opinion, a major program compliance, and no compliance or insurance control findings were noted either. So clean again. Just to go over the governance communication memo, which is just, it's uh, one, of, one of the memos that you guys receive along with the ad for, uh, just outline what it says in there real quick for you guys. Just the, noted the new GASI pronouncement that we uh, included in the ad for. Then we kind of have significant estimates that we note for the report, which are capital assets, the net pension, open liability, your claims occurred but not reported, and your allowance for doubtful accounts. We did have no disagreements with management. Management did not consult with our accountants, and no difficulties during the audit, during the audit and no independence issues. So upcoming GASB pronouncements, nothing that's earth shattering coming up for you guys, just listing them here. We definitely don't need to go through it all. Um, I don't think any will impact the town of Guilford, but um, just to note that we are, we are up to 102 now. I do think the big ones are past us at this point. So uh, all minor stuff coming up in the, in the next few GASB pronouncements. So, I will end with any questions. Uh, and I do have that door. If, if anyone has any questions. Great. Thank you, Santa. Um, first of all, thank you for the presentation. Um, thank you for your services and congratulations to the Finance Department for another stellar report, audit report. Um, I did have a couple things. Uh, they're, they're more um, maybe corrections or clarifications uh, when I was when I was when I was reading the initial few pages um, uh, let's see I'm, I'm looking for the page right now actually it's uh, actually no Roman numeral three under the um, ultimately the letter the executive summary letter um, right under long-term financial planning um, I had noticed that it said the town has made measurable progress in reaching its recommended guideline of five to ten percent of operating revenues, and and we have and we have updated it. Um, we're actually is that, is that, it, it, is that the MDA page number? Uh, yeah, it's Roman numeral three of the of the of the, of the first letter in the intro, introductory section, I should say, Roman numeral three. It's right underneath long-term financial planning. Um, and I, I just wanted to make sure it was noted that we did change that range and we're well within the range because if you, if you read it and you see 5 to 10% and we're at 12.3, it's we're well over it. But this is a range that we established um, about a year ago. I just an issue of just wanting to be reflected. Um, so it's just a correction there. Um, and then, again, these are these are small, minor corrections. It's nothing substantial. Gotcha. On the next page, on item number, sorry, page Roman numeral four, right at the top, I do believe that, again, for record, the construction of the high school was completed and open for the start of the 2015-2016 school year. This is saying 16-17. I don't know if that affects anything substantially, but I'm. Fairly certain it's 15, six, uh, 15 16. Yeah, so maybe Jane just fix that after this year. Of course, whatever I'm saying, just confirm it, but I'm pretty sure 2015 was the year that, um, that it was opened, beginning of the school year. If not, then it stays correct. Um, other than that, there's obviously for all of us a lot of, a lot of the audit numbers and the reports and the appendixes, uh, appendices and a lot in here, um, but I did scan through it, and those were just in the beginning. Other than that, um, I had no other comments or questions. Um, does anybody else have anything for Santo? Uh, I, had a, I had a question. Veronica, please. Santo, um, on the police pension, 
I think you said it was funded at 76 point something percent. Do you happen to know what 20, year 22 was? Um, I can't pull that up. We have to go back to last year's effort. It's not. I just wonder if, it, if it's moving in a positive. We're well, working hard to make it grow. So you, want, you want to know the police? Uh, percentage funded in prior year. It was definitely probably, it was definitely lower because of that change, position. Change our discount rate, right? so we just got to drop our percentage. Uh, our percentage. So those those numbers are are fluent for decisions that are made um, at the pension committee level. I'm, I'm trying to see if I can find it. I was curious, Mary Jane, is that affected by some police moving over to defined uh, contribution plan, or that doesn't have any effect? No, because the pension plan only takes into account those that are currently okay. in, uh, gotcha. on the plan. Yes, yeah, so. And it's rate of return. Right. Okay. project okay. that um, caused the reduction in the fund balance. I think it was close to a million dollars or something like that. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, just about Mr. Ailes' first point, Roman number three, just a couple of paragraphs about that. Is that the right starting date? Is that the right reference date? I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Is that page number? Roman numeral three. Yeah. I was a little confused by that. You're talking about the letter again? Yeah. Yeah, the letter. It mentions the town's October 1, 2020 net taxable grant list increased by three yeah. million. What, what page number is that again? Roman numeral three in the, in the letter. Oh, uh, Roman numeral three? Yeah, okay. It's just a typo. Yeah, it's three twenty twenty one. Yep. These things that carry over from year to year. And then next year's audit will see a big jump because that's when the uh, reval took place. So. Um, Not reflected in this one. <clears throat> well, I can point out in terms of the funding of the pension, various funding. Percentages, the, uh, the change in the, in the school employees because they're allowed to take full uh, full distributions. So it's had an adverse effect in the funding percentage, which is something to keep an eye on. Were you referring to any specific page? Oh. That you were looking at, or just in general? I've kind of lost the page. I remember okay. that we're in the 60s. For, we're in the 60s for the school employees, 70s and 80s for the other. It's the low 60s, and, and we want they not lo, not terribly long ago. They're all kind of on this on an even par. Mm -hmm. So Bob, we've had conversations with our actuaries um, and the pension committee um, in changing the way we value the board of education um, pension because of those lump sums. Yeah. <laughs> um, it was negligible this year, so uh, we chose not to make that change. But moving forward, the valuation will yeah. better represent how we're paying that out with the lump sums. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Just to me. I think I just I was looking at page 88 
that's the uh, public school employees pension yeah. you yeah. were referring just to? Noted, just noting the shift over time. Yeah. So we went through a period of very low interest rates, and when and we found that when somebody would take a lump sum, it would, um, from an actuarial point of view, create an extraordinarily large, have, have an out, outsized effect on the on the remaining fund. Further questions? If questions are done, I, I would like to just make one comment, just to help Mary Jane out a little bit here. Please do. Um, um, <clears throat> there was no management audit comments, we didn't know any, any issues during the audit, but Mary Jane and I have been talking about the general fund. If you, oh, did I stop sharing? Did I stop sharing? No, nope, we see it. Good. So if you can see, this this is the committed portion of the general fund. And when when we go to audit the general fund, it, it becomes a little diff difficult with these committed funds. And it seem that, you know, they seem to be growing every year. And I was kind of <laughs> made a verbal recommendation, and you guys would probably need to help uh, Mary Jane create a, a separate fund, but maybe tracking these items in its own fund, because it's becoming more complex to actually follow what's going on in all these committed funds in the general fund. And it's just because of the way the units is set up, it's on a budgetary basis, so it becomes a little difficult at the end of the year to unpeel all the transactions that happen in these committed funds. And Mary Jane, maybe you could explain it a little bit better. You know, it doesn't have to be tonight, but maybe in a different meeting. I'm not sure if you're still interested in creating a separate fund, but I know you and I can talk about it. How would you like to address that, Mary Jane? So, so the bottom yeah. line is because we don't budget for the items that we spend out of those committed funds, mm -hmm. it, it doesn't flow through the audit properly. So, um, okay. It's a process so issue. If, if uh, Santo's recommendation is um, to have a separate fund specifically for those committed funds mm -hmm. where the uh, revenue and the expense flows through there like we have other other funds um, mm -hmm. gra our grants and, and that so that it doesn't affect the general fund right, right now we're constantly affecting the general fund uh, tonight we're moving money from uh, the committed fund for debt to cover the expense um, that we anticipate through the budget but yet we don't budget for that fund mm -hmm. so um, one option is to make its own fund. So here where we have general fund, bonded projects, high school, you know, all the major funds are listed, one of those funds would be the committed funds. Mm -hmm. So we would, we, we would still, let me, go ahead. Let me, so let me, let me chime in here, Jay. It wouldn't, you wouldn't, it would, the presentation and the financial statements would be the same. Oh, okay. Like this would not change. You would still have everything on a general fund because we would combine it at the financial statement. Sorry, yeah. But for we tracking purposes only, there would be its own fund. Okay. So it would, okay. it'd, it'd be the same yes. here, but you would have a track Correct. differently. Correct. We, we in units. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So it would always be committed in the general fund. It would always show up like this in the financial statements. It won't change. But for us to wrap, to, to complete our audit of the general fund, it would be tremendously easier. easier. Right now, we have to peel every transaction that happens to each of these away. We have, because it's on a budget, you're on a budgetary basis, we have to peel away all the transactions. Would it show someplace else in the audit? The, no. The, the, it, not at all. Well, only, not at all. only place that you do the difference is in units. Yeah, I was going to say it sounds like a units. Right, right. That's okay. Yeah, I just want to clarify. I think Mary Jane still needs approval to create a fund in Munis to track it. Well, we have to approve the funds to go into the community. Yeah, so there's, yeah. there's pros and cons to yeah. that, so it, it necessitates a larger discussion. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> Presentation at a later date. <laughs> okay. Um, 
Thank you for adding that, Santa. Any, anybody else have anything on the audit? Okay. Again, well done, finance department, for all the hard work. And Santo, thank you, and CLA for your work as well. Thank you. Um, I'd just like to yeah. add that it's a Please. team effort between the Board of Education and the finance department at Town Hall. So. Yes. I, when I said finance department, I hope it didn't, Linda didn't feel slighted. I'm sorry. I just I'm in finance sure. department in general of both, but I just like to make sure. I think I was only looking this way. So, Linda, I'm going to look right at you now, <laughs> and I'm going to thank you. And Linda the, and I and try really department. hard to work together. So I know. <laughs> I know it's a team. I know it's a team effort. I know. Mm -hmm. so. Excellent. Thank you very much. And uh, you Santa, we'll see you soon. Thank you. Okay. Item number two on our agenda would be public forum. Anybody wishing to address the board in public forum? Okay, item number three, approve minutes. We have three sets of minutes to approve. Start with the regular meeting minutes of February 15th, 2024. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. Uh, any comments, corrections? Scanning real quick. We are on the 15th, yes. Regular meeting. I had one in public forum. Okay. Um, so Mr. Ailes said a few words about former longtime board member Ken Gamera, who recently passed away. Okay. And then a little further down in correspondence, paragraph two. Just put the, it should be received without comment, just like it is in the section three. Okay. And then a little further down on page three, um, the paragraph that starts, there was a discussion about Johnson controls. I just think the C in control should be capitalized because it's the name of the uh, entity. Clarification. Exactly. Okay. Johnson isn't controlling anything. <laughs> Not in this case. Okay. I have a uh, comment slash question on page seven near the top where uh, it goes through the numbers uh, for the bonding. So it gives the total and says return on investment. One of best returns, well, it should be one of the best returns on investment, recognized as Lighthouse School District in state. Lighthouse, or was that a misinterpret? I'm just I'm just reading it from here. Return on investment, one of the best returns on investment, recognized as Lighthouse School District and State. It was in Dr. Balistrasi's comments at the board yeah, finance yeah. meeting, talking about how the return on investment that we get from the investment in the school district and the and the results. I'm just asking, does anybody recall what that lighthouse was? Was it lighthouse or would, was it misinterpreted? Leading. Would it have been the word have been leading? Leading school district and state, maybe. I just didn't know what lighthouse was, and I just wanted to make sure it was. Lighthouse. Th doesn't make any sense, yeah. right? So we should probably just make a note to change that to leading school district and state, because I believe that's what it was referring yeah. to. And I noticed that it appears a few other times in the minutes too. So wherever it appears, that was that some kind of special program or recognition lighthouse school? District? No, that, that's what that's why I was asking the question because okay, I, I, mean, I, I don't, don't know. Re I just, ever remember hearing that, and I, that's why I'm looking at the board of education like lighthouse school this year. Is that something new? It's not. So I, I, it sounds to me like it should should have been leading. Okay. Um, very few with lighthouses. <laughs> just the, yeah, just the ones was, along the coast. That was my only comment on that. What did you guys do with the school finance project that she referenced? Because it was the cost per student. Okay. That's right. Is the name of that? Yeah. Lighthouse? It's not Lighthouse. It's just the school finance project. Okay. But I, I, I do know that she referenced we that. We could probably Google it <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and find out. I just had, had not recalled hearing that phrase before. So. Um. Okay, is there anything further on the regular regular meeting minutes of February 15th? Otherwise, I'll call the question all in favor. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? Great. 
Item number two for minutes, budget public hearing minutes of March 5th, 2024. Do we hear a motion? So moved. Second. Comments, corrections? Uh, I was not listed as president, but I was present. Voted, so. Well, that's important. That's so. <laughs> important. Um, I had a, I might have had a couple, I don't know. On page three, second paragraph from the bottom, um, where it says, while Guilford declined like other districts, they did not decline as much as projected and as much as other communities. Still want that to be confused with project. Um, page six. Um, let's go one, two, three, fourth paragraph near the middle. Ms. Malvesi said she doesn't have the numbers yet, the 2025 numbers yet. A little further down the next paragraph. Um, where it's six line down where it says review, review. Obviously that should be revenue, but should be noted as non-tax revenue is proposed to increase 2.57%. A um, little while later, same paragraph, last sentence. This project would result in a projected mill rate. Mill rate spelled two different ways. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Pick one. <laughs> I've seen it. I, I was going to say both of them work. So, and I would only ask that, and it's, it really could be a cut and paste for the edit. In between, right after that, after the 4.23%, and then the next he added, in between that, I know I had mentioned about the Board of Ed bond requests, because in the next line it said he had at, he added there are no town requested, so there was discussion, discussion about it, yeah. um, or ju or just a, um, indicating what the bonded requests were by the Board of Education, which were noted somewhere else too, so. Oh my goodness, and I had one more. Last page, last paragraph, Mr. Ailes noted the Board of Finance. If you put in, if there was an E in there, the Board of Finance, that'd be actually kind of funny, but I just figured we probably should correct it. Does anybody have any other comments or corrections? On page three? Sure right below the itemization of the bonding request and the paragraph that begins dr balistrasi there's another reference to lighthouse school district there so we should make that revision we should if if it comes up a couple of times we should probably linda you're looking at me like you know the answer now yes versus performance. There's no mention in here of Lighthouse at all. It says um, return on investment. We continue to be one of the most successful and most recognized school systems in the state by the measure. State accountability index, outside objective evaluation, standardized test scores, college placements, arts and athletics. We maintain our focus on learning and instruction or remain open to constructive feedback and continuous improvement. And it has the, the scatter term. Okay. There is such thing as a lighthouse school district. The school superintendents association, I guess, evaluates and, and distinguishes that every year. So I'm just saying it's a thing. But I'm, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm just, we should find out, yeah. we should find out but I'm going to withdraw that whole <clears throat> comment about Lighthouse and have it be looked at to confirm. Because if it comes up a couple different times in the minutes, then obviously there's. It needs a clarification. It, yeah. Mm -hmm. Or a definition if it relates. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Does anybody else have anything on the March 5th Board of Finance minutes? I'll call the question. All in favor? 
Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay, we'll move on to th uh, item three, budget workshop minutes of March 7th. Your motion. So moved. Second. Comments, corrections? I had one on page five. Please, yep, go ahead. Uh, kind of halfway down, there's a Mr. Trotta's name in the one, two, three, oh, yeah. fourth paragraph. Yeah. Just a transposition. Any other comments or corrections? Okay, call the question. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstentions. Okay. Moving on, item number four, correspondence standing building committee minutes. Good evening, Chairman DeMeo. Good evening. I did give him the warning that you could join a little late tonight, so. Yeah. But you were, but you were still here early, so. Okay, I have plenty to do. I kept myself busy. I know. I'm sure you did. Uh, okay, standing building. Any, anything for um, from uh, what meeting are we? March fifth. Anybody have any questions? Seems to have been a pretty short set of minutes. Yeah, I was. Uh, Cliff uh, was uh, on vacation, so he gave us all written updates on his various projects. So there wasn't a lot of dialogue to be had on those. And only because he wasn't present, we only had one invoice to approve. Or two invoices to approve. So. Okay. Okay. Is there anything you'd like to bring to our attention? Or uh, um, if not, that's okay. No, I mean, uh, just, I guess, just the, I know the Baldwin Middle School has been on our radar screen. That is out for, for a competitive bid on that repair. Um, and um, 595 New England Road went back out for public bid. Um, so uh, those are probably the two most active projects right now. Uh, soon to come up will be the uh, Jacob's Beach uh, septic system bids, uh, septic system project. Um, they obviously want to get that completed before the start of the summer season. And uh, soon be far starting the uh, addition to the apparatus in addition to the fire. Okay. 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 Board have any questions for Mr. Demeo? Okay. I'm just curious. That Baldwin Kitchen project—that's been going on for quite a while, hasn't it? Well, can you say that again, please? Is the, that Baldwin Kitchen project that's been going on for a little while? They couldn't do it one summer and got um, extended. Maybe the uh, Baldwin Kitchen project took place the uh, in the in the summer of uh, 2023. It was open for business at the start of school. There has been a few uh, uh, punch list items that needed to be addressed, which uh, the contractor uh, responded to relatively quickly. Um, the only outstanding item was the uh, the floor uh, seemed to be um, not performing as expected, and it turns out that the uh, um, cleaning um, crew was using an incorrect product on it. It took a little while to flesh that out, but the project was completed on time and the thing was over. Okay, it did wrap up then. Okay, I'm sorry. It always seems to take longer to close projects, not that we expect, with, with uh, closeout packages and submittals and uh, things of that nature and, um, and punch list items, but um, it was open for business. Okay, that's good. Great, thank you for that. Okay. Okay. Chairman DeMeo, it's a pleasure. Thank you for joining us this evening. Pleasure. Okay. Have a good evening, everyone. Take care. Take care, David. Take care. Item number two, Pension Committee minutes and the monthly report. Any comments, questions regarding 
pension. That pension report showed almost no change month to month. <coughs> um, we could, and item number three, OPEB, minutes, monthly report. Any on those? Any questions or comments on those? Okay. Hearing none, uh, we will move on to item number five, review and accept the report of expenditures for the Board of Education for February 2024. Linda Trudeau, Jennifer Baldwin, welcome. It's been a while. It has been, welcome. And now it's your show, go ahead. Well, thank you. <laughs> There's actually nothing really exciting to report, so I like that. Um, expenditures for the month of February 2024 were $5,149,409.42. This represents 61.39% of the budget as compared to 62.1% um, in the previous year. Revenue for February 2024 was a total was $655,341.80. This included um, excess cost grant in the amount of $622,572. This represented um, a 68.1% um, payment by the state. We budget at 70%, so it was fairly close, um, but still under and under what we've gotten over the last couple of years. That was split up into two, into two lines. Um, oh, where did I lose that? It was a, the special, oh yeah, the special ed bus line. Um, that was $160,371.73. It also $462,200.27 went into the tuition line. Um, we had um, non-resident tuition of $317.80, pre-K tuition of $25,952, and $6,500 for tuition from Clinton. Um, purchase services have been higher than the prior year. Tuition, um, the percentage of this budget expended is lower than the prior year. And again, we talk about the excess cost grant there. Um, the the capital, um, I know that it's right now it's a, the, the percentage of the budget expended is lower than the prior year. That's because um, we received a bunch of payments on the capital leases, and I think there's still one more outstanding for the newest truck. Yes. Um, and so the warrant that, that is being submitted for a total of all payments for this month um, is $2,812,000. $2,812,323. And the only thing really that stood out in the warrants was uh, a bunch of stuff from Eversource. I guess there was a contract that came in at a higher rate that's being renegotiated as well as a, a billing error where there was a double payment. But that was really all the excitement for this month. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Trudeau, you mentioned Questions. Yes, at, go. Yeah, at our last one of our recent meetings, you mentioned that the largest, the most onerous unfunded mandate is the ex excess cost grant. And I, I'm just curious, how often does it arrive? Is it so we get it in two payments. The first one comes at the end of February. The second one comes at the end of May. We get 75% of what we should be receiving in February and the last 25% in May. And is there any hope that they'll make up the shortfall? No. Not unless you do property tax reform. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's going to happen. Yeah, exactly. Well, go in the opposite direction where they could scale it back even further or no? And from what I have heard, it doesn't sound like it'll change for this year. We don't know what next year is going to bring. Okay. Next year is a, a new budget. And over the years, Going back as far as I remember, five, six, seven years, it was, and I think I mentioned this during one of our workshops, excess cost grant should really start to think about that not, not being available. It's just, it's, it goes down to the point where it's, it's leading towards the trend of going away. So Extinction. Not next year, but it could go down even more, you know, with the new budget to your budget next year. It's not going to go away, but the legislature, or, or get, legislature and the governor have introduced a wealth index, which uh, I have 
raised significant concerns with at CCM uh, because unlike the decision we make in terms of what kind of education we afford our normal, uh, our regular school children, we're all in the same market when we're buying special ed services, when we're doing outplacements. So they cost every community the same amount of money to put a, a child in a facility somewhere. And to introduce a wealth index on that is grossly unfair. It's a good point, yeah. Which is why you're fighting. Doesn't fit well with my classic Robin Hood theory, but uh, that's another <laughs> story. Um, okay, anything, um, I don't want to necessarily go to warrants quite yet, but anything on the financials? I know, and I know I've asked this before, substitute teaching still it's running above where it was last year, and I'm not expecting that's going to change too much between now and the no. end of the fiscal year. Yeah. No. no. We've talked about all the reasons why. It's just mm -hmm. teachers are tired. We still have a number of illnesses, teachers on leave. We can't get substitutes, right. so we tried raising the... the payment for the substitutes to attract people. Has that made any impact? I haven't seen anything substantial. Right. Okay. Um, tuition was noted as lower as la <coughs> lower from last year. I had looked at last month's tuition report that you had sent and then we got tuition report. It looks like it upticked about twenty thousand dollars or so. Right. In terms of um, the under budget. Right, so there were three facilities that we now have the actual invoices for, so it's no longer my estimate. So I updated the Sound School, Strive School, and the ECA, okay. Education Center for the Arts, and then just a couple other minor adjustments here and there as things, you know, if, I'm, if I'm off a day I mean, or something. Yeah. Ultimately, you know. ultimately, it's good news to be yes. a little bit more under budget, but it, you, it usually whittles away as you go for Yeah, <laughs> so to go so It was like, oh, it went the other way. Um, so and and was... on this report, I broke out the tuition <laughs> revenues that we received just so that you could see them a little bit clearer, the pre-K tuition, mm -hmm. the tuition from other districts, and the non-resident tuition. Instead of netting them, the, two of those were previously net into the other expenses. So now I've broken them out and just kind of cleaned it up a little bit to make it a little bit clearer, a little bit more transparent about the revenues. Is there anything driving the increase on for the school nurses on that line? So, um, yes, there is a position that we have that is funded through the town's ARPA funds, and I submitted for a reimbursement through the February 16th payroll. I have received those funds from the town, so we will be reimbursed for one position that's in there that is not budgeted, so that's what's throwing off the expenses. Okay, but that'll so bring you back in line. Yes. Okay. We haven't talked about food services time is that are they still holding their own they are still holding their own um, they are currently um, they did have a slight loss for February but it's it's a odd month um, and then it's you know the timing of you know, deliveries and things can throw it off so they had a $9,500 loss for February but year-to-date they're running a profit of $61,517 and the meal counts seem to be holding pretty steady. So they're, they're doing pretty well. Anything on warrants? I did have one. I think I know the answer, but I always like to confirm. Uh, it's page 11. New Solutions K-12. Um, is that is that one of the first payments for the study? Because I, I remember it being, what, what's the total amount of that study again? So it's, it's, well, there's two parts to it. So there's a part that's being done this year. This year and, and next, year. next year. I remember so that from the budget so it's, discussions. It's 40 okay. and 40, I believe, okay. or 35 and 40. Okay. So that's part of that study. Yes. Not additional. Okay. That was, a, was on Warrens. I have me. one on page nine. There's mm -hmm. for GHS heater rentals, is that for a tent or? Yeah, yes, okay. it's a tent I thought, I thought that might be. They are still using the tent. Um, it gets used quite a bit. Okay. So we are still running the heater in that. That'll be coming out shortly, the heater 
in the coming out. Right. And that's something that we have discussed in the operations meeting, um, you know, the pros and cons of purchasing versus renting. Mm -hmm. And it's still, it's the same thing with the tents and, and with the storage containers. It's still more economical to rent them than it is to, to own them and mm -hmm. purchase them. Why do you guys use the tent? Is it a special events kind of thing? No, nope, it's like uh, extra. Okay. It's like extra lunch room. It's extra space outside for the kids. If if you come around the, I don't know if you the tra know the traffic pattern at the high school. Probably you come not. in. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're looking at the building, over to the left, you can go down and around the back of the building, and that's where the parents go to drop off around the back of the building. So it's back there, kind of by the work, you know, where they build the boats and things of that nature. So okay. they've got classes that go out there and. Um, kids go out there and have lunch or during the break time. Right. Yeah, they don't have the tent in the front parking lot anymore. Okay. That's been long gone. Anything further? Okay. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to accept the report of expenditures for the Board of Education for February 2024 in the amount of $5,149,409.42. So Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Recusals? Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. Thank you. Item number six, review and approve the report of expenditures for the town government <clears throat> for February 2024. Jane, good evening. Good evening. Uh, so, uh, being the end of February, we are 66.7% through the year. Our revenues are at 97.8%, slightly down from 98.2% where we were last year. Obviously, that um, number is made up mostly of tax collection since we've um, had all of our tax collection um, dates pass. Uh, other than the, the selectmen and finance um, going over. The only other thing I wanted to just re remind you is um, during our budget presentation, we did talk about three state grants that we're getting in this year that we are not budgeting for next year. Um, it's why we're showing um, overage in other departmental that will eventually um, be over by close to a million dollars once all the rest of our state um, money comes in. But so that that's where those grants are represented um, that I had spoken about last month. Any other questions on revenue? Nope. On the expenditure side, um, similar, we are 66.7% spended, which is almost exactly where we should be at this um, time. Uh, just a couple of items I wanted to bring to your attention. We are still closely monitoring the fire department. Um, they're at 71.8%. Uh, they are uh, over in overtime and replacement salaries, um, but they do have a number of encumbrances um, that bring that percentage up. Uh, yeah, next, as though they were lower than at this point. Then they were yes. Than they were last year, so they are making Correct. Progress. Yes, we've we've been working really hard to, to to make that work. Exactly. Good point. Thank you, Jeff. Um, also, uh, capital is overspent at the moment by 168,000, um, 602,000 encumbrances there. Um, this is where the majority of the expenditures that Santo spoke about um, are tracked. So these, uh, this is made up of the uh, IT uh, items that we are spending from our committed funds. So we're expending them here, then we transfer the money from those committed funds because the money comes in not through the budgetary area. This is, that's the um, issue that we have each year um, with, with the audit. I, I just want to add that I provide them a spreadsheet that outlines this whole thing. <laughs> shouldn't be as much of an issue as it is, and that's all I'll say. Um, but uh, there are other ways that we can handle it, and if it makes it easier um, for the auditors to do their work, then it's something that we should um, discuss so I can come back to you with a proposal for that. Um, it would be how we spend all of our committed funds. Um, I am thinking of a way that we can have it a separate fund still requiring all the approvals. That, that does not go away. Um, so. 
it, it may, who knows, it might be easier for all of us um, in the end. I don't know, um, but I got some pros and cons to that, so. <laughs> well, good. But anyway, that, that's kind of what he's talking about. You know, we, we spend in here and then we kind of put the money in to, to cover it. So we're not really showing that expense somewhere. We're kind of wiping it out. Mm -hmm. it, it, you know, we see it. We, we see it in all the transfers, but it's not as readily visible in the audit. And that's, that's really the issue that um, they're, they're trying to I won't say fix because it's not wrong. <laughs> it's Make just it easier for them to see and, and yes. categorize. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly right. So we can do it that Mr. way. Chairman, yes. I might suggest that we go back to Central and say we can't be the only municipality that does it this way. And if uh, we aren't the only municipality that does it this way, what suggestions do they have for us to change it, as opposed to just saying, "Oh, it's a problem with Munis." It's they are our auditors. The, well, the, the issue. They see a problem. Have them come up with a solution the, the, or recommendation. The, I should say. The, the issue is that. So I'm going to tell you what I would have done in my prior jobs. We would have built in an additional appropriation to these line items. We would have increased your budget, therefore putting the money into the budget and then having the expense. It's not historically how Guilford has done it. Mm -hmm. So. Just because we don't know how we're going to spend it when we uh, create a budget. But that's why they're having an issue. It's like an off-budget audit. It's off-balance sheet, right. and you, yeah. don't want yes. to, you don't want to be seen to be increasing the budget for, for un, unplanned expenses kind of thing. So it's, I see Correct. It, but it's, that it's a two-sided. The it's appropriate a, way to do it is to increase your budget for those expenditures. <clears throat> so that's, that's why it's not flowing properly for, for the auditors. So if we were to move them, to a separate fund, they would flow better, and we would still be able to stay with the same process that Guilford does. But is that best practice for audits? Right. It would be better to put it in the budget and yeah. have it. There's the offset, so yes, it might look optically. So you wouldn't have to put it in your budget today, but right. Right. Uh, yeah. it, it, it would so. increase your budget over, over time. He like said, "We just have not historically done it that way. It so is this is a different way." In the budget over time, it is, but we're not showing it. Right. Right. The budget's higher. I might have to take more heart medication. <laughs> but the money's there to pay for. Correct. It's right. a, yeah. It's, it's increasing the grand list. It would increase the. It would, it would, would increase on the expenditure side and also on the revenue right. side. It would be right. revenue right. coming in from the general fund, committed, right. and so. But if we take these off to a separate fund, like he's suggesting then we don't have to really change our practice, per se, mm -hmm. to, to, to make it viable. But uh, oh, have you want to for the audit? I guess I'm not seeing the pro of keeping it off. Because you're not changing it, you're just like right. reporting it differently. Correct, so in the end, in, in the end in your audit, they are increasing our budget. If you go to the end of the audit and you look at the revenues expenditures, the, they're, they are adding those budgets um, to, to your underlying budget. So they're doing the work on the back end right. that we don't do on the front end. And it's, just, it's less transparent to the public. Correct. Not having it in the budget. Correct. So it's... So we can... That's it. But our, the rub is identifying the expenses if you don't know them up ahead of time. Right. So instead of just approving the transfer in, it would be approving a budget adjustment. So your $115 million budget might be $150. <laughs> you know, if, if you depending on, on what you're doing. So. so when would we make that decision? On which way to? to no, I mean to in terms of when we would make a budget adjustment, would it be? halfway through the fiscal year? It could be or? at the end of the year in the same way. Instead of a transfer, it would be a budget adjustment. I your see. process would be the same, but it would increase your budget. I see. So the issue, the, the, the problems, the pros, the, the cons to that, is when we compare this year's budget to next year's budget, now we have all these things mm -hmm. that, that we've done mm -hmm. um, that don't necessarily represent what your true budget was to begin Correct. with. Mm -hmm. um, so... <laughs> but year besides, year it's, it's yeah. not changing it's your net time. revenue. No. So, so when we when we look at <clears throat> our um, original budget, 
that would stay. The original budget would stay, and this would be an amend amended budget, bringing the, those items in. So, mm -hmm. so we could do it either either way, the the way that Santo is suggesting, um, or by by doing budgetary transfers. I'd like to know how other towns do it. They do budgetary transfers. It's more transparent. Mm -hmm. I mean, I personally like the transparency. Yeah. I wasn't prepared to have this discussion. No, no, well, <laughs> well we also, we, we, we had also, you know, near the end of that conversation said it's for, you know, a discussion that we could have mm -hmm. at, at another time mm -hmm. when there's more preparation and we could talk Correct. about the pros and cons to it. Correct. So I think that would be a good idea to do. Mm -hmm. and I think we also have another what Casby suggests. Right. Well, and, and that's the thing. There, there's, a, there's a whole bunch of different factors to this. So, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, and then we can make that determination whether we want to go that way or not. Correct. So. Well, for tonight, that's a good enough answer for me. Okay. <laughs> that's all I want to say. <laughs> I would hate to be able to point this out, but the dates on the last two columns are the same. Oh, to the end today. No. <clears throat> This is why I can't go on vacation. Because <laughs> we did all this on vacation last week. You should be working on vacation. You wouldn't have had your reports. That's how vacation works where I work, too. Yeah, well, it's okay. I'm used to it. On expenditures, didn't really have anything. I just saw planning and zoning was trending a little bit higher, but. Timing, um, timing is it, 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 I, I looked at the back. Mm -hmm background yeah not by much and um, there's a substantial encumbrance on there too yeah that that'll sway it okay anything else on revenues or expenses warrants I did have question on page five and it it's more I guess on the it's more on oh I'm sorry yes on the regular warrants there were a number of um, property tax refunds to Sachem's head Association I know what a property tax refund is but is that, go, that does that go to Sachem's head Association and then they distribute it or I mean what what is that specifically for it because it just it indicates tax refunds to Sachem's head but I, is it individual property owners or is I, it I would assume it's properties owned by Sachem's head association because I know they have their own district though but, but I didn't know it's probably their buildings it's their it's it would be the, because each individual property owner would be ta is taxed right. separately, so these would be whatever Sachem's Head Association themselves owns. So it's individual properties within the association, and then they distribute it to whoever that property owner is. No, no it's, it's theirs. Not. Okay, that's why I'm it's asking. Theirs. It's theirs. It's probably the yacht club owned or by Sachem's Head it's Association. It's their property yeah. Correct. proper. Correct. Okay. Just, I was just curious how it worked. Yeah. I wasn't questioning the amount. Yeah, yeah, I just no, I was know. questioning how I it know. worked. Yeah. <clears throat> the property tax re refund would always go back to the property owner. <clears throat> okay. Anything else on warrants or special warrants? Special fund warrants, I should say. Um, there's another set of weekly warrants and then the medical medical is report. The, is the special fund the first sure. one that go for foundation? That's not just an insult for thousand, is it? No, that's that's, that's the actual the payments money. to the actual yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just wanted to make sure. Yes. That was, I right. was like, wow, that consultant <laughs> really <laughs> made out. Yeah. So well, Mary Jane, I'm mm -hmm. definitely curious if you know if the ISL premiums will go down or if you're that far in negotiations. Uh, we we don't have final numbers yet, no. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry, I kind of missed it. He, he moved right. on to medical. Medical, okay. <laughs> sorry. No, no, you I was going to say, well, that's a good segue. I guess we'll just go to medical then, so it's fine. <laughs> if there's nothing else on warrants, 
did you have anything? No, no, no I was just just <laughs> Okay. That was really the big question. Just the the premiums will go down after the negotiations. Well, if um, remember correctly, ISL has already gone down. Hmm. Um, so what we're looking at is the potential of maybe some the regular medical going down, but possibly the ISL as, as well. Okay, but maybe that would have been a better question because mm -hmm. we already have the lower ISL hasn't kicked Correct. in yet. Correct, it's kicked in now. Okay. Yes. Yeah. But there's possibility. Potential on both ends. Okay. February is a greater, greater Yeah, they month. caught up. And, yeah, I noticed that the projected surplus went down about 200,000, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, we are up projected six. Surplus. We are up six people mm -hmm. um, with total claims over 75,000, so we had a big jump in just the number of members um, hitting right. that threshold. Four <laughs> months left. Hold your Only breath four months Hold left. Hold your, <laughs> Hold your breath. Hold your breath. We'll be right. starting our next audit. <laughs> Time flies. Anything else on medical? I, I do see NIS from time to time. Slim Nation, any continuing to get any feedback from the uh, folks We get there? great feedback from Slim Nation. We continue to. Um, we are requiring anybody in the program right now will have to um, do the survey mm -hmm. so that we'll have some um, more data to, to provide. It's gonna, that's a requirement this time around. Um, but we, we constantly get good feedback from Slim Nation. Great. Mm -hmm. Good. Nothing else. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to approve the report of expenditures to town government for February 2024 in the amount of three million six hundred eighty-five thousand five hundred twenty-five dollars. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Recusals? I will recuse myself from any payments to Antonazi Associates. Item number seven: discuss and take possible action on debt budget transfer. Um, Mary Jane, I'll just, uh, I know there's a memo here dated today that went to the Board of Selectmen and, and our board um, regarding transfers. Um, would you like to provide a brief description? Uh, yeah, so, so as you know, um, when we do our budget process, we anticipate the use of some of the bond premiums, which alleviates um, the, uh, mitigates the mill rate increase um, year over year. Uh, so we are looking all of our debt payments for the year have been made so there's there's nothing left to, to come out of this budget so we are looking for um, thirty six thousand three hundred ninety nine dollars worth of reduct premium um, refunding reductions um, and we have some money left in some of the interest lines that's the two small numbers 1964 and 1701 um, and so taking out $33,034 from fund balance committed to future debt to balance out these accounts. Just clarification, um, $36,699? Oh, $699, it's sorry. Did I, I, one, I just want to make sure there wasn't a change right Because I didn't bring my glasses, I should have made my, okay. my numbers bigger on the it's screen. Okay. We got, you. We got you. <laughs> Are there any other questions? Otherwise, I'll... Do my best in entertaining a motion. Which would be to approve the transfer of $36,699 as outlined in the finance director's memo to the Board of Selectmen Board of Finance dated March 18th, 2024, regarding fiscal year 24 debt budget transfer. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. I'm going to guess you might not need me up here for the next couple of days. I'm sorry? I'm going to guess you don't need me up here. Uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. Item number eight, consider and take possible action on bond resolutions for consideration at the April 16th, 2024 referendum. We have, uh, I'm sure all in front of us, the bond council's uh, resolution that they've crafted recommending the bond authorization of $2,452,080 for the items that are listed. Um, in the motion, I will actually um, mention what those are, but uh, does anybody have any questions? Pretty standard. I did notice that there is some rewording 
Yeah, I was going to say that, that was which my concern. Which is very helpful. Yeah. Um, Thank you. With the fiber installation and infrastructure upgrades, which is what they are. Bond Council made that, made that recommendation. I had it approved by Matt. Yes. <coughs> yeah, so, it's good. Um, all right, so the motion uh, that I would entertain for this is to recommend to the voters a resolution is prepared by Bond Council to appropriate a bond authorization of $2,452,080 for pipe unit ventilator and oil tank replacement at Melissa Jones, tennis court renovations at Guilford Lakes, fiber installation and infrastructure upgrades at various town schools, and architectural and engineering services for future projects. So moved. Second. Anything further? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. Abstentions? Okay. We are going to go to item number nine, discuss and take possible action on the appointment of auditor for fiscal year ending 2024. Um, Mary Jane. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> Notice yeah. I just handed that one right I over to you. I <laughs> well, so, I, I, and I, I know every year at a, about this time we need to start discussing it. So, yes. Uh, so through deliberations with this board, um, if you remember, we um, did ask CLA for a final number for mm -hmm. FY24, mm -hmm. which was $77,000, which I believe was accepted um, by this board. So uh, it's the last year on the contract for us. So we will absolutely be going out to bid for FY25 and, and beyond. Um, at this point, I would highly recommend taking this last offer. It might be the last lowest offer we get for a while. <laughs> yeah. So. Very, yeah, very. So seventy-seven thousand. That's yeah. What the if last we back, year of it? Yeah. This is the, la the last yeah. year. Okay. Because because we had thought about we, going uh, back out and yeah. we were. Correct. And you had asked me to have a number yeah. from them. This is the number I brought to you at that yeah, point. That's. <laughs> But we'll be yeah. going out to bid, um, after, you know, so we'll be putting that together. And When does yeah. that go out, Mary Jane, again? Um, uh, like I forgot for my... Because the contract is ended and we're not going mid-year, yeah. <laughs> mid yeah. we can kind of do it any, any time. Okay. Um, so the, the sooner the better. The sooner we, you know, we have to have our auditor selection by now. It's due now to the, sec uh, to the Secretary of State. So... Um, we want, you know, we would have to have be done by now. We have our little committee. I, different people might be on it, but um, we can take care of that. Give me a little memory refresher. If I remember, this was the contract where we had that 11th hour increase. Yes, yes. correct. Okay. <coughs> it, it came for the FY23 audit that we just completed, um, and you know went over well, <laughs> but then we, um, we asked for a final number for FY24, and that's what this is. And then if you'll forgive me, can you tell me how does the 77 compare to our last year's number and the year before, if you um, know it, Well, the, the, the FY23, we are, it's probably about 3% from, from the revised FY23 right, to, the to the revised the FY24, yeah. Mm -hmm. But it was a pretty significant bump, I'm afraid, I, I, I don't, yeah. Remember what that was? It was in the seventies. Like, I, yeah. I want to say well, about twenty, twenty-five thousand, or, or <coughs> but don't quote me on that. Um, yeah. But from what I've seen from other bids around the state, it's a good price. So, so tonight we're discussing right now, and then taking possible action on ultimately appointing them through the end of twenty twenty-four, based on the seventy-seven thousand dollar number. Right, so you're, you're appointing them as the that. auditor we need for to the right. June 30, 2024 <coughs> audit. All right, so mm -hmm. we need to do today. today. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, right, which is, yeah, which, okay, so just want to make sure that was all we needed to do. To do. Today. The RFQ will come no, out later right. on, or the oh, RFQ, yes. that's yeah. all yes. later. No. Okay. I move that we Go ahead. <laughs> appoint CLA as our auditor for the fiscal 2024 audit. Second. Further discussion? Well, we have to let's go over all our options. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think we just did <laughs> next year or soon, not next year, soon. Um, all in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, abstentions. 
Great. Thank you. Committee reports um, on item number 10. There's the building permit report. And then I'm wondering, um, Megan, I know you had reported on the fire to, uh, firefighter OPEB benefits co committee that you were yeah, on. Yeah, they have a meeting this Friday. This Friday. So anything new to report or next month? Okay. Other than I think they're going to go with the the IAF plan. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we'll. That's right. Have you accurate? I mean, that's where that's where it left. Where it is that? Like. That's where it looks like. You'd be moving both active and retirees to mm -hmm. the the um, the health care plan. Okay. So it's a little bit different. One. Well, that's what I thought. Okay. You said Friday. That means Friday. March twenty second. Yeah. Okay. So it's a little bit different than the intent of the committee because we were just looking at retirees. So it has a little bit of a shift. The scope of the committee has changed a bit. Okay. Just based on the information, yeah. Going back to building permits, we're, yeah. we're at eight months and we're three permits shy of the 22, 23 year. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of activity going on in town. Mm -hmm. And that's just that's yeah. just the single family. Yep. So, which I believe that was one of the. Given the number of approvals that are already through PNZ, there's a couple of there's potentially another couple of hundred units that they're going to have to work through the process on. Yeah. Not single family homes, but yeah. Uh, others, multi are multi family. Any of them affordable. What's that? Are any of them affordable? Yeah, well, yeah, one of them, Hubbard okay. Road, uh, okay. and also the one at Woodruff Property. We're trying like hell. You know that. Okay. Uh, moving on to item eleven, old business. Wasn't sure whether to put this under old business or new business, but it's really just an announcement or just a rem uh, reminder about the meetings coming up, annual budget meeting. On Tuesday, April 2nd, in person at 7.30 p.m. in the Guilford High School Auditorium and the annual budget referendum being held on Tuesday, April 16th from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m., of course, at all polling locations. Anything else under old business? Item number 12, new business. Any items under new business? Mr. Chairman? Yes. Please. This morning's uh, Board of Selectmen meeting, the Board approved uh, an additional expenditure for the construction of the two new bays at the fire department uh, in the amount of, uh, let's round it up to $577,000 or $578,000. and change. The, bid, the bids <laughs> came in uh, significantly higher than what were, were anticipated. We had originally approved uh, a bond issue of $1,072,000. Um, and there were three options that the Board of Selectmen was looking at this morning. Uh, the first of which was to add another bond question on the referendum. So that's, I think you had been apprised uh, through Mary Jane that that might show up here. Um, the second option was because it was under a million dollars that we could just do it at a town meeting. But uh, in my mind's eye, if we had the opportunity to bond it and put it on a referendum question, that would have been the more appropriate thing to do rather than forego uh, you know, uh, a referendum. Typically, that, 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 that provision is allowed so that we don't have to add a referendum. And the third option was American Rescue Plan funds. And the Board of Selectmen this morning uh, determined that this was an, uh, an appropriate use of uh, uh, the uh, ARPA funds. Uh, it puts a... a pretty significant dent in what we had left, but this is exactly the kind of uh, uh, thing it's, it's there to use. Uh, the bid uh, is uh, been awarded to uh, uh, Munger, uh, and yes, Dave recused himself from that decision. Um, and uh, there were a couple of uh, uh, alternates that were added on, slit drains, uh, and then there were a couple of items that were added uh, that were determined to be appropriate. One was the facade on the east side. The original building was not going to look like the same uh, as the, I mean, the new building was not going to look the same as the old building in terms of the facade on the side you see from the street coming towards it. Uh, and then the same thing with the garage doors. 
so that added to uh, the, the, the total cost. But um, so we, the Board of Selectmen, uh, approved it this morning. Would uh, greatly appreciate uh, your support for that. Uh, and then secondly, we had uh, at uh, Public Works, uh, the commission uh, came to uh, the Board of Selectmen uh, looking to uh, resolve a problem with um, some mason dump trucks that they've had, an old, uh, they're 2014, 2015. Um, these things have been lemons uh, since we bought them. Uh, and one of them we've put almost $30,000 into in the last couple of years. So the commission, uh, in, uh, Mark Larkins came to me and said, you know, can, what can we do? We've we got to get rid of these things, they're costing us a fortune, but we need these kind of vehicles. Uh, so they have uh, decided, they asked to replace these three, uh, what they call Terra Star pickups, um, uh, with, uh, with two uh, Mason dump uh, <coughs> things. The uh, cost for those is uh, about $214,000, $215,000, and the Board of Selectmen approved um, the purchase of those also from American Rescue Plan funds this morning. Uh, there's an anticipation uh, that we will be able to sell these uh, at auction. Um, the original quotes were 14000 on a trade-in. Uh, Dave Castro and, uh, and the commission think we can do better with our online auction system that we've been using for the last couple of years. So any, any proceeds we get from that will uh, offset the cost and, and, and reimburse ARPA dollars. If in fact the online auction does not uh, work out the way we anticipate it, uh, then uh, we will still have the opportunity to go back and use the trade-in option because we're we can wait a couple of weeks while we go through the auction process. Sorry, so, it's not a fire truck. Okay. <laughs> was the two fourteen the figure for the total for the purchase, or is that per truck? Uh, no, that's a total okay. for the two for okay. the two. Um, what are, what are those used for? Are they park and rec field maintenance? Or no, this is this is public works. Public these, works are, these are these are these are workhorse trucks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And if they get auctioned off, that will. And I, will and that I dare, go to the I board of selectmen? I make it 14,000%. Right. I dare say if Mark Larkins <laughs> thinks this is a good move, it's a good move as chairman of the uh, Public Works Commission. He and committed. he doesn't like to spend money. Matt just committed the, no, uh, the auction funds going in back into ARPA, so. <laughs> I knew it would go somewhere. <clears throat> well, it's a good, good use of the ARPA. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely it is. It is. It's, it's a one-off expense rather than yeah. investing in yeah. something that continues to cost right. down the road. Right. Right. And we're saving bonding costs. You're not costs. starting a program. Right. Saving bonding and, and, costs and on both, top of And that. both of these purchases would have been uh, bonded. bonded. That's yeah, all. and we're so hoping for lower rates in the future, so it's yeah. maybe not the best time to go to market. My recollection is we're coming up to the deadline of when we have to identify the use of the ARPA funds. 2024. It needs to be obligated by December 31st of this year, <coughs> obligated, so as long as we have a purchase yeah. order out for it, um, and actually spent by December 31st, 2026. So okay. the sooner we take care of everything, the, yeah. the better it will be for us, and the easier it will be for us to report. So the money under the control of the Guilford Foundation, that they would not be subject to that? It's already, it's already gone. It's already gone. It would be considered it's already, already gone. It's an allowable expense distributed. for us. Okay. Yep. I see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Already, already, expend, already expended by us. It's been yep. given for those purposes. It's not, it's not, so for the town, they just have to expend it to Guilford Foundation. Correct. Guilford Foundation then. They have the they they have, avenue. Of yeah. And, and, by, and by the way, that money will be distributed yeah. probably by the end of this month or next month. At yeah. the latest. Yeah, that's going to go. By we're going to go through that quickly. We've, right. Yeah, we've 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 already Secure. given them the second tranche. Yeah. We gave them five hundred thousand uh, dollars earlier this year. I just and saw then, the second uh, one. And then the five hundred thousand on two more. Oh, you yeah. saw yeah. on the correct. Yeah. Yes, and and they do need to report to us. Um, you know how how that is spent, so we have because that for our records report. for ARPA. Yes. Yeah. But um, like a but subcontractor, so it's not right. the same. Right. We just want to. We we just need to have the rec records for our. There was one other thing that I just thought of as you were mentioning these. Was there not also something in the paper that was announced about the grant that the fire department Yes, the uh, congressionally directed spending, we got, I think, 963 or something that was around that yeah, number. Um, it wasn't as big as we thought it was going to be, but uh, that's because they had to smooth it out around amongst the 15 municipalities in the third congressional district, or it's more than 15. Uh, but 963000 off of that. that it's about a third of the cost. The What's that? Do you know if that was a house? That was house. Okay, that was house. house. Okay, house mm -hmm. 
That's all right. We're, we're, we're banging on the doors of Senate right now no, for some Okay, money. I did the Senate this time, so. <laughs> but that's a million dollars <laughs> that we would have spent. We are already authorized to spend. Mm -hmm. So that's a million dollars we're saving in bonding. Right. right. Yeah, and that's huge to get that. Even Absolutely. if it's a little short, that's a big deal for Guilford to get because there are a lot of grants that go in. Um, there's a lot of grants that go into that, so it's really, that's exciting, yeah. Anything else under new business? Public forum? Do I hear a motion to adjourn? We agree adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, everyone.